See, it's the perpetual gaslighting for me. Kimmy, sweetie, blink twice if you want to bounce, mom. Seriously, blink twice. Hey, this is Sensibility Speaks. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This channel discusses trending topics, celebrity news, and reality TV. I do my very best to keep my stress to like right here, like on a regular basis, like right here. Your focus is your health. And so that's why even in the friend group, I kind of pick and choose the little events I'm going to go to, where I'm going to hang out, where my energy is going to be. When I'm home, I can't pick and choose, so... When we at home and I'm with Maurice and I'm with Monster and we're trying to do that whole co-parenting thing, that's probably my biggest stress in life, in our honesty. For Kimmy to have that level of reveal with Melody on the camera, no less, to be that transparent, that must have been cathartic for her. She needed to say that. She needs to be seen. She needs to be heard. She needed to get that off of her chest, honey, okay? But see, Kimmy really needs to be careful because when you think about stress and disease, this ease, it has a correlation. And I hate to say it, exorbitant amounts of stress can really impact your cortisol levels, which can impact inflammation. It can lead to depression, anxiety, right? She already had to get that emotional support dog and see that was looming probably uh, underlying stress that she had having to deal with Maurice, not listening to her, marginalizing her, denigrating her opinions and being dismissive as hell, child. But we're going to get to that in a minute. But see, Kimmy really needs to be careful because God saw fit for her to successfully beat this bout of cancer. So she's on a cancer-free recovery remission journey. She don't need no goddamn stress of somebody trying to treat her like a goddamn mammy in a mew, okay, or what have you. She don't need none re-triggering her illness. You don't need that because, again, there is a correlation between stress and dis-ease. I'm just saying, but let's continue. Well, co-parenting with Maurice because we just think different, you know? We think different a lot of times. And I think right about now we're in a place where I think Monster needs to do more and he verbally agrees with me, but he don't really kind of back me up. You know, verbally he says, yes, Monster needs to do more. Yeah. But like, if I say, well, Monster do this, and he doesn't see him do it, he doesn't say, well, Monster, didn't she tell you to do so and so? Like, my big stress right now is at my house. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to work through a lot of my co-parenting things that I need to kind of get through. And getting back into the workforce gets my mind off it. Now, see, that's a shame when you have to resort to work as a source of refuge because you're trying to escape the day-to-day -day in your household, honey, okay? Be, be perfectly honest. There are definitely days that I, um, my energy isn't quite back to normal. And from what I'm told, that's perfectly normal. So you just kind of power through on some of those days because I physically feel better. And who among us ain't worked a little too tired before? Now, see, that's a shame that she's trying to convince herself of that. Yeah, of course, you have long, grueling days. You know, if you have family, um, you have to tend to your household needs. And then if you're working outside of the home, but you're coping with getting over a serious illness that could have taken you out of here. OK, and then you have the added stress of that gaslighting mofo playing in your face. OK not respecting the fact that you are a partner, you are his wife, you're not his goddamn slave and mammy, okay, catering to him. But child, I'm going to dig into that in a minute. Let's keep going. I want you to know this. I'm proud of you. I tell you all the time, Kimmy, you look dumb. Thank you. Because you do. You do not look like what you've been going through. Thank you. Your spirit has continued to be positive. To I'm, be right. I'm, I'm proud of you. Thank I am you. very proud of you. I am. Hug me, girl. Hug me. I'm very, very proud of you. See, Kimmy knows that Melody is a good person. You see how she's speaking life into Kimmy. She's pouring into Kimmy. I don't see Tisha doing that. And that's not to say that she doesn't. But she's so self-absorbed and so into herself and so busy trying to put herself front and center. 
put it this way. If Tisha does give Kimmy words of affirmation, I just can't see her being truly authentic. I, I just can't. She's too covert of a narcissist, allegedly. But let's continue. What's up, babe? Who are you making? Records. You know, I had a run. I have a meeting at um, 6.30. What's up? What do you think about Martel today? Did you, did you like her? Right? That's not what I like. Mm -hmm. She was cool. Now, she was real quiet. She mm -hmm. was real quiet. And maybe that, that's just her. Maybe she's just way, way more quiet than, mm -hmm. you know, it made up in my head. I mean, you know, you know that's a funny thing, watching somebody on TV and then you have this perception of yep. how you think they're going to be. Yep. And they may be, con you know, completely yep. different or whatever. Yep. Because, you know, they were, like, reserved and stuff. Yep. Martel was still doting, you know. You felt like he was doting? Yeah. Uh-oh. I feel like he's a gentleman. Martel has stopped in the street because he saw me trying to get stuff out of my car. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, one thing about that damn Kimmy, she's going to uplift that demon of a damn Martell child. Just make it make sense. Make it make sense. <laughs> How you doing? I'm all right. Uh, How are you? School. Things seem to be going good with you and Monster. Things always go good with me and Monster. Like, he's a great kid. I just kind of need him to bow in and like, listen to him just a little bit more. Mm, that's not a strong suit. I guess not, seeing as though you don't hold his ass accountable. For nothing, shit. It ain't your strong suit either. Put the two putting dishes in there. Come, I do that. Come through, hey. I put the dishes up. Are you kidding me? I got That's up this mor morning and it was a two dishes in right here. The, the dish from here to here. It might create noise. You know, if I breathe, <laughs> you would wake up. It's because you leave near early. See? It's the gaslighting for me. It's the audacity for me. But in all seriousness, I wonder about the family dynamic in which Marceau and Maurice grew up in. I often wonder about that, even since the inception of the show, because somebody was misogynistic as hell. Somebody, okay? And so I know his parents, of course, are older, old school, had different norms and societal norms and values were different back then. But that being said, how did the father treat the mom? For them collectively, conjointly, for the both of them to be so outwardly chauvinist. Now, of course, as we all know, um, Marceau, he is just in your face with it. He doesn't hide it. There is no bones about it. It is what it is. Tisha sucks it up, whatever. Now, as far as Maurice, you know, he tried to play the good cop, bad cop in every and all situation. And But what you do, and one thing, oftentimes you do in all things, right? And I'm going to expound on a good cop, bad cop in just a second. But I just wonder, did the mom put the boys, her sons, on a pedestal? Because what is it, like a family or eight of nine? Allegedly, I think it's a couple different fathers. I don't know if she's married twice or what that is. Correct me and tell me in the comments. But the daddy that they showed, I think, on the first or the second episode, what did he say? He worked at General Motors, Ford, one of them in Michigan, because they're from Pontiac, if I'm not mistaken. But he probably was old school, protective provider or whatever, just bringing home the bacon, probably didn't pour into the boys emotionally. You know, older men back then thought they were damn King Tut. Hell, the men today want to be treated like King Tut, but they can barely protect, let alone provide. But that's another conversation. But I'm just wondering, how did the father treat the mom when they were married? Was he kind to her? Was he considerate of her? Or did she, like, wait on him like a mammy in a damn mule? You know, this is a learned behavior. Even though Maurice and Marceau have different personalities, but it's still the underlying character traits just in terms of how they view women. It's misogynistic as hell. And it's the misogynoir of it all when it comes to Black people, misogynoir. But he marginalizes Kimmy. He doesn't think that much of her, in my opinion, because he often dismisses her. But we're going to expound on that in just a little bit. But again, I just wonder how the family dynamic was. And Scott's sister, you know, how was she treated? Was she taught that her brothers were to be put on a pedestal? Was she taught that men were to be put on a pedestal and her brothers were treated differently 
did she have to, or if she has any sisters, did she have to do all the household chores? Because boy child, he's a male and a phallus between his legs. He wasn't expected to damn do any housework, but a woman waiting on a man hand and foot shit. I'm glad I wasn't raised that way, child. I cannot even relate, can't fathom it, would not be. All right, but let's keep listening, child. I'm a boy right now in boot camp. Okay. Monster hasn't really lived up to the standard that uh, I've set, so I put him in boot camp. Now he's doing a little bit better in school. And that's good. He has made progress in school. I kind of need that to trickle over over here and make a little progress in that at home. Maybe you need to put him in boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> the, the home version. <laughs> you been on boot camp how long? About a week and a half. So do you feel like boot camp is working? Yeah. So what happens? I wake up at five. What else? Is that the entire boot camp and just getting up early? Basically. That's not it. You're not learning from it then. First, what he does in the morning is he goes and starts working out at five. And then we talk about being the best person that he could possibly be on the way to school. So we're focused on schoolwork. What are your goals for schoolwork? Three, I used to say 3.0 GPA. Uh, what else were the other goals, as a matter of fact? Do you even remember all of them? I don't remember all of them, I remember most. Mm -hmm. uh, the main thing is go to Ohio State, not from a football association. Okay, so I hear a football, heard a sentence about a 3.0, didn't hear anything about chores. <laughs> I didn't hear one single thing well, about that's chores. That's good, isn't it? Like, I have to do chores. That sounds great. How come it don't happen like that? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how some of the stuff that we need to happen in the house can get incorporated into this boot camp. Don't you have a list? Do you know where your list is at? Go get a list. Because I believe that chores are on the list. When this, with the list, are the consequences on the list? We haven't put a goal list for consequences. We've put a goal list for, you know, reaching positivity. Just find me which number. We're the chores and stuff all in, that's all. So you gonna tell me the number? Nah, man. Of 20 items, not one of them is about chores. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Could have thought we thought we put that one in there. And you know what, that doesn't surprise me. It's so far down on the list of priorities this year. It's not that high for you, Daddy, and it's not that high for you. Kimmy seems to be the only person that it is like all the way up here for. And that shouldn't be. Your dad thinks I don't give you harsh enough consequences to make you like, listen to me. Do you feel that? I feel like you give me harder consequences than him. Really? If her consequences are tougher, why wouldn't you act faster with her? Don't like, just say like, oh yeah, I'm not listening to Kimmy. I'm just not gonna do it. That's just like, I'll get like, caught up doing something and then I just forget. Once I believe that. I 100% believe that. But we gotta be able to try to stay focused on the one thing so we can get through the one thing. It looks like we might need to do a boot camp for your chores. It looks like we need to maybe revisit the top 20. Start today. So, have that at it. You feel like boot camp is worth working? Mm, I think it has to become more routine. I want him to be able to do the stuff that's right even when he doesn't feel like doing it. I'm just curious. I really am gonna need y'all to revisit that on the little list though. Because <laughs> it's no way you got 20 things on there and for real, not one thing about chores or anything. That actually speaks volumes. What do you mean by that? What do you mean? Just what I've always said. It doesn't, I don't feel like it's that important. Yeah. I think that that's a given. Because like, there are certain baselines that whether you had goals or not, this is a minimum that you're going to have to do to live here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it's important to you, and what we can do is we can write you out. Said, but if it's important to me. Yes. Then it goes on the list. I feel like saying it's a given that something's on the list is kind of taking it for granted. It feels a lot like I just dis dismissed your standards. And it feels a lot like you simply focus on yours mm -hmm. and pretty much just dismiss mine. I'm not dismissing it. I'm just focused on mine. <laughs> Why is the other stuff on the list? It's for a reason. As you visualize and you write down, it kind of gets in. So I think it should be on the top 20. 
I really want to read it. I want to see what's the other stuff that made the cut where chores and stuff didn't. See, I could not with Maurice. All I got them gaslighting. No, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. Ain't no way in hell. Because he is intentionally being dismissive. He's marginalizing her feelings. He's playing that whole good cop, bad cop role. So let's go back to Kiowa. So remember a couple episodes ago when they were in the kitchen, same scene, almost damn near the same scenario. And when he was like, well, let's call Kiowa, you know, as if though he could triangulate them. See, I don't like that game plan shit. That's very narcissistic of him. Whereas in my opinion, just like Martel and just like Marceau, they're more overt in their approach, meaning they're in your face. They try not to hide it. But Maurice, with his narcissism, allegedly, he is very covert. And see, him calling Kaya at that time, hoping that Kaya would would use her residual feelings of thinking that or feeling or maybe it happened that Kimmy was cheating with Maurice back during the time when they were trying to perhaps work out their marriage. But whatever the case may be, he was hoping that she would jump down Kimmy's neck. I'm just like, how the fuck you gonna call her on camera? And I don't know if that was planned or are you trying to put Kimmy on the spot, hoping that she would side with you. But as it worked out, she sided with Kimmy because Kimmy's like, well, that's your child. And I will want to discipline him in the manner in which you would discipline him. And so as to be in alignment and to be congruent. And so Maurice wants to play the good cop with Monster. Oh, I hate calling him that. Maurice Jr. Okay. As if to say, well, you know, Kimmy's the one that wants to discipline you. I just want you to go to Ohio State. I just want you to make a, what, a 3.0? I'm just like, child, Kimmy, put the motherfuckers out your house. And God bless the baby. And I'm talking about Maurice Jr. Because he can go back to Kiowa and Zave. Is that, a, is that what Kiowa's husband or boyfriend, fiance, whatever the fuck, or partner, whatever his name is, he can go back and live with them. Because you should not have had to deal with some goddamn dirty ass house playing mammy and goddamn mule slaving behind goddamn lazy ass Maurice and Maurice Jr. because they're not doing chores. That's not your biological child. And the way that they have it set up, you don't know what behind the scene conversations that that child has heard over the years from his mama or whatever. And not even from Kiowa. Okay, let's go back to Maurice because he is the head. And anything beneath him that's not going right since he's the man and all is his goddamn fault, okay? And you haven't laid out any real consequences. So if Maurice Jr. doesn't clean up his room or doesn't do X, Y, Z as directed by yourself or Kimmy, you don't have any real consequences. But yet you don't respect women your goddamn self. And so by proxy, the baby boy is subconsciously not respecting Kimmy because he knows that you don't goddamn respect her. And she asks you to do shit or asks you to do stuff and you just do what the hell you want to do and run amok. Then you have that sheepish ass grin on your face looking goddamn stupid and silly. He's almost like a kid that never grew up, like a young guy. His mentality, almost like a Peter Pan syndrome. You know, Kimmy girl, blink twice if you want to get the fuck out of that marriage. Child, when you first was diagnosed with your illness, you should have put all of them out, including Maurice. Put that motherfucker out too, okay? He got to go too because he's causing undue goddamn stress. And had you not allegedly put his ass through goddamn law school, you probably been would have got rid of his ass. Child broke, goddamn credit repairing motherfucker. <laughs> Let me stop. Oh, I'm trying not to curse, but oh, it just flows off my lips so effortlessly. But I'm trying to rein it back in because I don't want the YouTube gods to get me. And I don't want to use too much profanity. But I'm just saying, Kimmy, girl, you're better than that, sis. In your, what, early 50s, 52, 34, or something like that. Honey, you still look good. You beat cancer. You got a whole grown ass son that you did a great job with raising. And now Maurice trying to use you to goddamn raise his son with his lazy ass. Okay. That's why he married you in the first goddamn place. So he can get joint custody or whatever the hell, probably goddamn duck and child support. Who knows what his damn motive was. And maybe he really did want to have his son so as to have male guidance or for you to have your influence and your imprint on his rearing during this stage of development in his formative years. And motherfucker, then if that's what you wanted, then step up to the goddamn plate and raise your motherfucking son. Y'all, excuse my language, but that just pisses me off. But anyway, 
<sighs> this is Sensibility Speaks. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye bye. <laughs>